everyone. We are looking at 15 digital tools that every church needs. In the first part of this special series, we talked about the basics, uh, five of the most basic things that you absolutely need uh, in terms of digital tools for your church. Now we're moving on to part two, which are the helpful tools. And we'll be talking about some of the more uh, useful ones that you need to have uh, when it comes to digital tools. Um, but before we jump into these five that are the most helpful, we certainly want to thank our sponsor, Church Teams. Church Teams is a full software suite for managing all the things that keep you up at night, letting you get back to what is most important, which for every church is making disciples and building teams. Uh, there's a lot that's included in this useful software suite, um, but uh, they've got this great text to church feature. Text to church is a cutting edge tool for engaging the church team software with your church. So just imagine a church member texting the church office number with the word give or VBS or camp, um, Bible or directory, whatever they're looking for, and being able to engage in the life of your church. So I know this is a useful tool for my church. Uh, certainly grateful to church teams for sponsoring this uh, special series. You can go to churchteams.com slash answers to learn more or text answers to 817-677-9850. So let's jump right into this. We are talking uh, about let's, five. Let's talk about, let's, let's do this before you jump into it. Just jump. Let me, let me interrupt because I've got a I've got a flash. I've got a bonus. I've got something that I just want to tell our, our listening audience before we even get into them. For the next two podcasts, and only for these next two podcasts, we're going to offer a bonus, a sixth one. So even though we're doing 15 digital tools, part two is six, and part three is six. We're offering bonuses this time, so it's 15 plus two. I just wanted to let the listening audience know that we made that decision almost on the fly to add <laughs> to add two more. So just let you know that. Well, I'm, I'm helpful for the clarif uh, that clarification is helpful and I'm grateful for it. Um, I, I hope the audience is okay with an additional point of content. I think, I think everyone should be all right with that. I do too. Um, so we definitely want to take a look at these. Um, th the first one that we're looking at in terms of helpful digital tools is calendar meeting software. Um, now that sounds kind of boring. But it's really not. It is something that excites me. Dad, do you know which particular calendar meeting software that I use? Calendly? I do. I use Calendly, and it links up with my Google Calendar. And let me tell you, um, Calendly is not a sponsor. Um, so I just want to be very clear about that. <laughs> We're just making a recommendation here. Um, Calendly is a, it links with your Google Calendar, whatever, I believe it works with uh, the, the Mac version of a calendar for those of you who are unsanctified people and in, in using Mac products. Um, I just offended half of our audience, if not more. I'm a Google three guy, fourths. sorry. Yeah, three-fourths, <laughs> maybe the majority. <laughs> uh, what I love about it, though, is people get to pick their times. Um, they, they select what they want in predetermined time slots that you have set up. So you can program this thing. It is completely customizable. And uh, you can pick the day, the time slots. You can pick the kinds of meetings, the length of meetings. Uh, you can put, you know, if you if it's a lunch meeting, you can put selections for restaurants that they can choose from. So full, fully customizable. It has saved me hours a week, multiple hours a week. I am not no longer going back and forth with people on times. I just send them a link. Um, and you can have multiple links associated with you for different kinds of meetings. And so if I've got the lunch meeting link, I've got the 45 minute link for a, uh, for an in-person meeting, I've got the, the digital meeting and it, and it sets up the, the uh, zoom for me. Um, I do, it does all of that for me. So this is, it's basically like having an additional assistant. Um, and it is, phenomenal. So I absolutely love how Calendly works and how it works with my calendar. If you are still handwriting your calendar, why? Why are you doing that to yourself? Don't do that to yourself. Go digital, get Calendly, connect it up, set it up. It may take you a you know a few hours to figure it out, but once you've done it 
And once it's set up, it is glorious. So calendar meeting software, very important to me in case you can't tell. Some, sometimes uh, some of these uh, software digital tools that we're mentioning are included in church management software systems. So one of the things that we want to do in going back to part one is we want to remind our viewers and our listeners that as you're checking out church management software systems, and of course, we are the advocates of church teams, as you're checking that out, see what features they have. You may be able to find some of these, not all of these, in your church management software system. So just do yeah, that. And I think that's a great point. Um, a software system like church teams is fairly comprehensive. It's going to have a lot in there that you need. Um, you may you may have to supplement it with some other things, but that's the case of any church management software system. So before you go get a subscription to everything um, that is digital, uh, check out a company like Church Teams. Again, churchteams.com slash answers uh, to go see their offering. Um, you can check that out, and uh, often it will cover most of what you need with one subscription. Um, and again, you may have to, you know, Calendly may be something you want in addition to a software system like uh, church teams. But um, but you can find a lot of what you need for your church um, with uh, with uh, church management software, CHMS, as it's often called. And talk about you getting excited. Number two, communication software. Slack is back for sale. <laughs> I do like Slack. Um, yes, this is a messaging system. And... Uh, it has, at least for the most part, replaced email in my life, and I absolutely love it. Um, we use it at the church. Um, it is we we kind of forced it on everyone, and you know it was a bit of a learning curve, but the team here at West Bradenton handled it well. What I love about Slack is you can set reminders for messages. You can. Uh, unlike a text message, the bad thing about texting is once you read it, it's it's kind of it kind of goes down into the thread, and you kind of forget that it's there. That doesn't happen with a system like Slack. Um, it you know you can mark it unread, you can set a reminder, you can actually set reminders for other people in Slack, uh, which is great. Um, it is a very robust communication system. Uh, if you have not checked out something like Slack, you absolutely should. Um, it's got an app on the phone. It's got um, an app uh, for your computer to utilize. Um, it's, a, it's a very neat tool. Certainly encourage everyone to, to utilize it. Get off the email in terms of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Sl Email's great, and I still use it for a lot of things, but Slack tends to be, tends to be the better communication software. And don't forget, part of the communication software world is text. And so when you start looking at text as a form of communication, you can then go to the church management software suite like church teams, because one of their best features is text to church. So that's another communication software that has a very specific purpose, texting to your church members, just as you indicated. Note taking software. Now, not everybody has note taking software. I am very simple with my note taking software. It's not pen and paper, but it is simply an app on my iPhone called Notes. And I have, I mean, if you want to look at topics, I've got them all over the place right here. I'm not going to let it, I'm going to blur it right there because I want people to see all my, all of my things on, on there. Nobody would ever steal any of your ideas, Dad, ever. These are not ideas. It says I need to get some Toto flappers for my toilet. Oh, that's that is Nobody. extraordinarily important. Uh, you need to write that one down. Yes. Now there there's some ideas for for um, uh, topics uh, for articles. Um, we're supporting at Church Answers University. We're supporting a lot of pastors in Uganda, but we we're, we're also supporting contiguous countries. And my geography is not perfect, so I have African countries contiguous to Uganda on here, so I can remember. Southern Sudan, Congo, Rwanda, Kenya, etc. cetera. Uh, so the, I have notes. I, do you use any type of digital note-taking software? Just a question. I've never asked you that. I do. I utilize uh, Google Keep and find it to be useful. Um, I utilize reminders within Google Calendar. So it's not a calendar event. 
It is a reminder to do something and it's a separate look to it in my calendar system. So Google Keep has been fairly useful in terms of making lists and I need to do these things. And it has like a checkbox feature too. So I can click the checkbox uh, when I'm done. Uh, so both of those have been useful to me uh, in terms of note-taking software, uh, both Google Keep and the reminder system within Google Calendars. But I'm a Google guy. We've already kind of covered that. I like I like yes. a lot of what Google offers. And, and Sam, I just, I just very quickly uh, typed in notes. And of course, I'm in my iPhone, so I'm in Apple. And to look at the different apps that are there, oh, there are dozens of them. There are just dozens of them. But I don't, I don't need to carry a pen and paper because I have a digital note-taking system. There, there can be an app. There can be a software that is a part of your Mac or your PC. But I'll, I'll, it can be an app on your PC well, or Mac. One, one useful tip for this. Okay, well, what is the spiritual benefit of something like this? Well, you, you have people, if you're in church leadership, you have people coming up all the time to you to tell you prayer requests. This is your opportunity to use something like Google Keep to write it down so that you will actually, if you didn't pray for the person right there on the spot, that you'll actually follow through if you say you're going to pray for somebody. So you could have a prayer list, something that simple in, in Google Keep and, and utilize the list in that way. And then now you've got the reminder that maybe, maybe a handwritten note, you know, go old school. You use the digital method to do something, you know, old school that is uh, memorable to the person that uh, is receiving the note. We still write handwritten notes to everyone that we pray for uh, that comes through our prayer list at West Bradenton. Um, the staff, we, we have a, a support staff person that takes all that down. We all sign the note um, and then we, we snail mail it to them. But the way that we get to that point is we, have, we actually have a, a list system where we keep track of everyone that has prayer needs. By the way, I have my own prayer note-taking app just for prayer. It's called Echo Prayer. There you go. So there, there, there's one of those. Proofreading. Tom's time to talk. Proof reading. Oh, grammar. And the thing about being a grammar cop is when a grammar cop makes a mistake, that person is always pointed out is making a mistake. Uh, you, you, you had a preposition there. Uh, you use the subjective instead of objective pronoun. Uh, you split your infinitive. You're not a purist. But grammar is huge for me. And if you want, an, if you want some type of proofreading software, I am sold, sealed, and delivered on Grammarly. I just love Grammarly. And uh, Grammarly sends me a reminder every week of how many times I use Grammarly. And it's usually in the dozens of times that I use Grammarly. And it tells me the tone of my voice. And it tells me what my vocab is. But it also tells me as I'm writing something, are you writing some, something that is really, really not written well? Do you know what my biggest problem in writing is, Sam? A passive voice. Absolutely. Absolutely. I overuse the passive voice and Grammarly will come back and say, Tom, we've told you this 10 times today. You're an idiot. Stop using it. Just stop it. Stop it. I love Grammarly. You know what uh, Grammarly also does? What? It it does a plagiarism check. Ooh, I love their plagiarism check. And it, it is, and you may say, well, I would never plagiarize. Well, of course you wouldn't. But I know how I do sermon research, and sometimes I write something down, and I might forget to – I might write a quote down from somebody and forget to put that it's a quote, you know. And and it's a way for – if you do a manuscript, for instance, uh, which is wonderful. That's one way to do a sermon preparation, not the only way. Let's say you manuscript, and you've written down a quote that you're going to say, and and you just by accident forgot to write down that it's a quote. Guess what? Grammarly is going to catch that. And it's going to remind you and then often provide a link. Well, it will provide a link to wherever it is online. And then you can very quickly get the source. So it's not only just, hey, make sure you're not splitting infinitives and um, writing too much in the passive voice or leaving dangling participles um, or having what squinting modifiers um, or unclear or antecedents. Random I mean, these are all. Ran random don't forget capital random these are all. capitalization. Oh, Listen, if everyone could take care of their squinting modifiers and unclear antecedents, the world would, we might have world peace. 
Um, I would have to add but, the Trinity of the, 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 the those those capital letters just appearing out of nowhere. It bothers me. <laughs> I mean, I I my church is a United Methodist Church. That is a little C, not a big C. It's not the denomination. My church is a United Methodist Church. My church is a Southern Baptist Church. Little C, little C. Don't do it. Just stop it. Stop it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, this may seem minor until it's not, until something like plagiarism catches up to you. Um, So it's just a good practice to make sure that you're regularly proofreading. Um, Grammarly is a major help. It won't catch everything, of course, but it will catch a lot of things. Um, If you are a communicator, a quote-unquote vocational communicator, that would be a preacher, a teacher, anything like that, proofreading is necessary, and Grammarly is a great tool and relatively inexpensive. And by the way, if you use Word uh, as your as your word processing software, it has a review and then speaks aloud what you have written. I used to have it in a male voice. I've changed it to a female voice for some reason. I listen more to the female voice than the male voice. And uh, it reads back what I've written. And I catch a lot of things just by listening to what I've written. And one of my major mistakes in writing is I think words, but I don't write them. And so they just don't appear. So that's another one that is there. The the How editor feature yes, the, the editor feature in Word is also good. I I use both. So how do I proofread? I will get into Word. I will listen to the audio of my own writing. That's step one. I will then use the editor feature in Word. So if you have Word it comes with it. And then the last phase is Grammarly, which usually catches everything else. So I have a three-part process. Actually, I have more more that I do than that when I'm editing a book, say, for instance. But that's a three-part process that I have with just about everything that I I put out. Sermons, articles. um, You you listen to it. You use the proofread feature or the editor feature in Word, and then you use use Grammarly behind that. Presentation software covers a lot of potential. one one of them that comes to mind is the oldie goldie PowerPoint, but there are a lot more than power. In fact, for many PowerPoint dates you when you say that. So there are many different presentation software, but for the pastor or for someone who has has uh, things that they would like to show on the screen as they speak or as they give announcements, good presentation software is critical. Yeah, and there's all sorts of great tools like Canva, C A N V A, um, that helps you put together. Um, pictures and graphics. Um, Word swag actually is still kind of neat. I know that that app may be a little bit dated, uh, but there's ways to do uh, presentations well uh, beyond, say, PowerPoint, which is, you know, dated, but still also a very powerful tool. Um, We use Proclaim when it comes to our worship services. Um, Hmm. So that's one, if you have not checked out Proclaim, uh, that's one to check out as well. Bible software, the big one. Bonus time. This <laughs> bonus is time. Two. We say 15, 15 digital tools. So if we do a bonus in this episode and a bonus in the next episode, isn't it really 17? 15 digital tools that we promised you and two bonuses that you just were surprised. How's that? Okay. We're... we're we're, we're going. We're going to do the surprise. What really happened was we finished this and we said, "Ooh, this is big. This is big." So this is fifteen plus two. I don't think the audience is going to 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 mind that at all, one bit. So the big one on this is what logos. I mean, oh, is there? They're the they're the most known, the most robust, uh, the most utilized. So clearly, if you're talking Bible software, you you have to talk logos. Um, And I know that that's not news to anybody, because if you are regularly preaching and teaching, there's a chance that a chunk of people that are listening to this are utilizing the Logos software. And we'll just go on and say this. I don't think it's premature. Church Answers is going into a partnership with Logos, and uh, it's going to be several different aspects of it. Yeah, yeah. And, And now that we're mentioning other partners, let me also throw in Tyndale with the Filament Bible. Um, Ooh, yes. it, it is an incredible tool. So the way filament works is you scan the page at the top and it takes you to commentaries and v- videos and all sorts of information about that particular text. 
So if you're in Romans chapter one, you just scan that page with your phone with the filament app, and it pulls up a bunch of information about Romans chapter one. So um, I would say Logos is that, you know, very rich, um, you know, deep and broad sort of tool uh, that's great uh, in terms of Bible software. And if you're looking for something quick and accessible on, on your phone, uh, you can't beat the Filament Bible, the, the New Living Translation Filament Bible with Tyndale. Um, so there's two great options right there if you're talking about uh, digital tools. I, I am constantly recommending the Filament Bible to my people because it is, a, it is a, one, the New Living Translation is very, very easy to read. Um, and people actually read it, which is one reason I like it. But then they provide the, this richness of commentary um, through the Filament Bible. And all they have to do get out, is get out their phones and scan it. Makes makes things very easy. So there you go. Five, five plus one helpful tools for, um, for the church. Well, these, we, the, these, these are really the helpful. The first five were kind of the essential. And just, just as a reminder, once more, you may find a lot of these on your church management software. And Sam is going to mention once again, church teams and their church management software. Yes. Thank you, church teams, for sponsoring this special series. Again, you can learn more about church teams at churchteams.com slash answers. You can also text answers to 817-677-9850. All that information will be in the show notes. So if you're listening in your car and you're, please don't text and drive. Um, just uh, just go to the show notes at churchanswers.com and uh, you can check out uh, all of these links and all of this information. Uh, church Teams, a full software suite for managing all those things that keep you up at night uh, so that it gets you back to what's most important, which is making disciples and building teams. So thank you, Church Teams, for sponsoring this special series at Rainer on Leadership. Churchteams.com slash answers is where you can go to learn more about them, and we will continue with five plus one, I guess, uh, in terms of tools in our next episode. We'll see you there.